Imagine a shift in the tech landscape driven by the upcoming 2024 elections in America. Michael Gaid, a seasoned portfolio manager at Tidal Financial Group, speculates that if Trump returns to power, the tech sector might face bearish trends, while other sectors could thrive equally. Tidal Financial Group, known for its expertise in creating investment strategies using ETFs, also provides services to financial advisors, family offices, RIAs, and investment managers. Gaid shared these intriguing thoughts in a recent podcast, where he also discussed factors like the yen carry trade and the surge in small businesses. Let's dive deeper into his insights. That move actually was really interesting because it coincided with the uh, softer CPI print. But it wasn't like immediate. Uh, it, it was almost as if uh, if they did intervene, they intervened around the time of the release to make it look like it's because the dollar was weakening, not because them of them intervening um, because of that that softer print. I will say it is uh, it is fascinating to me that you've had this surge, you know, relatively relative surge, not huge surge. You've had this surge in the yen, uh, and what's been selling off is Nvidia. <laughs> <laughs> and the large cap tech names. And, and I know that sounds like it's a it's a strange link, but I've been floating this idea out on X. It's like, all right, how much of this AI momentum trade has been driven by the carry trade, the idea of money that's been uh, investors that are borrowing capital from Japan at basically nothing rates and then deploying it into the hot stocks of the moment. So yen comes back up and, and NVIDIA and all the AI names fall. That seems suspicious to me. Two weeks ago, the exchange rate between the US dollar and the Japanese yen hit a 38-year high of 162 yen per dollar. This significant movement in USD to Japanese yen cross has broader implications. With investors actively selling the Japanese yen in favor of buying the US dollars, the reason behind this trend is the difference in the interest rates between the United States and Japan. In the US, the Federal Reserve has set borrowing costs between 5.25% and 5.50%, while the Bank of Japan maintains lower interest rates at 0.1%. This difference creates a yield differential between the two currencies. In financial markets, this yield differential has led to what is known as the yen carry trade. In this strategy, investors borrow funds in a currency with lower interest rates, in this case the yen, and invest in assets that offer higher returns, dollars. This approach is attractive because it allows the investors to exploit the higher yields available in the US while borrowing cheaply from Japan. During this surge, Nvidia along with its other tech companies faced a sell-off. This decline can be attributed to the broader momentum affecting AI stocks. Influenced by the carry trade dynamics, the carry trade involves borrowing funds in a low interest currency, like the Japanese yen, to invest in assets in higher interest currencies. With the yen appreciating, it impacts these trades, leading to a sell-off in higher risk assets, including AI stocks. When the yen rises, the cost of borrowing increases and investors might sell off their AI stocks to mitigate the losses or rebalance their portfolios. This relationship highlights the sensitivity of tech and AI stocks to currency fluctuations and broader financial strategies. Understanding this connection helps explain why Nvidia and similar stocks might fall even amidst a technological surge. This situation seems favorable for small caps other than AI stocks. Let's explore what Gaid said about it. Yeah, so, so it's funny. It is, you're, you're hitting on something which is really important, which is that everything is interconnected. Okay, so you have this very sudden break. So, okay, let's go with that theory. The yen appreciates somewhat of reverse carry trade dynamic causes some forced selling at the margin in the large cap tech names. For a good year and a half, there's been this, this I think, spread trade that's gone on, especially among the hedge fund community, where they short small caps, and then effectively dollar for dollar, they buy large caps. They're playing the differential. Large caps have gone up and to the right. Small caps have largely gone sideways with a bunch of chop. So if you're trying to neutralize beta, neutralize the stock market, why not take less risk by shorting small caps and then taking those proceeds and going along large caps? Suddenly large caps have a sell-off. That spread trade goes completely against them and small caps have this huge, what looks like a short covering rally because that spread trade now is going through like a Six Sigma type of event, right? And it's persistent. Now, the narrative out there is this is the start of small cap relative momentum. 
I would love to see that. Like, I actually would love to see small caps outperform. I've been highlighting this idea that small caps hold the key for a better part of a year. Though around 300 companies in the S&P 500 are progressing, the index itself fell. This is because the index's performance is significantly influenced by its largest and most impactful sectors. While economically sensitive sectors like energy, industrials and financials showed gains, the S&P 500's overall performance declined due to the underperformance of its most significant sector, tech. The major tech giants that have been driving the bull market in the recent years experienced a prominent decline. These tech mega caps, central to the market's upward momentum, have struggled, leading to an overall decline in the index. On the contrary, smaller firms experienced a rally of nearly 10% in July. This divergence brought a broader shift in market dynamics, with traditional sectors benefiting while the tech giants struggled. Despite the S&P 500 setting back-to-back -back records in the first half of the year, investors were skeptical of these rallies driven by a limited number of large tech companies. Recently, segments other than big tech have surged. This is mainly because investors believe that the Federal Reserve is managing inflation without causing a severe economic slowdown. This optimism stems from expectations that the FED might soon lower the interest rates further supporting the economic growth. As a result, investors have shifted their focus to a broader range of stocks in sectors other than tech. This market performance shows growing confidence in the overall economic outlook and a belief that the market can continue to thrive beyond the influence of the tech giants. With elections approaching, many theories with similar sentiments are circulating. Michael Gaid shares this opinion. Let's listen to him unpopular opinion, a Trump presidency is actually bearish for tech. If the social mood has shifted and it's affected the Republican Party and if Trump does win, where there's this feeling that there needs to be more opportunities for smaller businesses, there needs to be more uh, equality of conditions for other sectors outside of tech, tech's going to get hit. And if tech's going to get hit, and that's been what's the, the, the sole momentum driver, we'll, we'll see You know, if, if the S&P is going to be the only game in town anymore. I don't think it is. In short, more volatility is expected as the U.S. election approaches. According to Predict It, the probability of a Republican victory in the upcoming presidential election has risen to 63%, an eight-point increase from the previous month. This shift in administration could potentially benefit small-cap equities due to anticipated tax cuts. This optimism is reflected in the Sol Active 2000 Index, which has hit a new 52-week high with a substantial 5-day surge of 10%. This is only the second time in the index's history it has reached to such a height, the first being on November 11th, 2016, the business day after Donald Trump was elected president. Following that election, the index continued to climb gaining an additional 7% over the next month and finishing 14% higher a year later. This demonstrates how political developments can significantly impact the market performance. Yeah, no, no, no. So, so actually, um, it's, it's an interesting point. The um, poor small caps tend to have more of a value tilt from a sector allocation, meaning if you view growth as being tech, value you know across the board tends to have tech in like the fourth or fifth biggest sector weighting, right? which is where they are in small caps, is where they are also in value versus growth, right? From a style perspective, even if it's large cap. So at the same dynamic that uh, uh, that, that spread trade unwind, right, of large to small, I think also can apply to growth versus value. Same idea. A lot of managers have been shorting value sectors, financials being one of them, and going along tech playing the spread. I've written about that on Investor Place uh, before, like three months ago, I made the argument that the best trade of all could be a simple spread trade going along regional banks and short tech because everyone's on the other side of that spread trade, right? So, again, I don't, I, it, that to me sounds more like a narrative, right? I don't think it's a rotational thing. I think it's just a mechanical uh, dynamic that's causing this, this sort of shifting of sector strength. The more important thing still remains, it looks like there's a defensive tone beneath the surface. I, look, in two of the last three times where value outperformed growth, you were in a bear market. Okay, it was the 2000-2002 period. It's also when small caps outperformed large caps. And uh, uh, the, in, entering 2022, value outperformed growth. The question is, this time around, if value is outperforming growth, if small caps outperforming large caps, is that going to happen in a bear market? Or is this the long-awaited bull market rotation where they lead the market higher? 
The challenge with that narrative on the idea that value small lead the market higher is the earnings just aren't there to support it. Right? This is this is the fundamental problem. You still have to you still have to kind of jive it with why is it that tech has been so strong and why has there been such PE expansion? Because of earnings, because of growth. Whereas the financials, not so much. In the small cap market, stocks are less liquid and smaller in size, making technical factors more influential. As of early July, hedge funds held near record short positions in small cap equities. This means that even a minor shift in market sentiment could lead to a significant reversal or rally. A small catalyst in this context can spark a powerful market rotation, as short sellers rush to cover their positions, driving the prices higher. In July, there was a substantial investor activity in equity ETFs, which saw their second highest inflows of 2024. Large cap ETFs attracted the most nominal dollars, while small cap ETFs experienced a more substantial relative gain. The iShares Russell 2000 ETF saw an inflow of $3.7 billion, making up more than 6% of its market capitalization. On the other hand, the SPDR S&P 500 ETF saw an inflow of just 2.4% of its market cap. This significant inflow into small caps highlights their outperformance and growing investor interest relative to large cap stocks. We are entering an era often referred to as the Goldilocks scenario for the Federal Reserve, where economic conditions are just right, neither too hot nor too cold. This means moderating inflation and steady economic growth. Recent inflation data supports this, with the Consumer Price Index CPI report for this month showing a decrease in inflation since 2020, signaling an easing of price pressures. This contributes to a more stable economic environment, suggesting that inflation is no longer a major threat to the economic stability. Moreover, Bank of America's Institutional Fund Manager survey highlights that concerns about higher inflation are no longer the primary risk for investors. In short, the combination of easing inflation and stable growth creates an ideal scenario for the Federal Reserve, allowing it to navigate the monetary policy with more flexibility and less urgency to react to economic imbalances.